than Turkey, are they? We've been, we've been talking about this for the last couple of days, but, uh, but anyway, I appreciate y'all coming out. Uh, from the Virginia folks, I appreciate it. You're going to see a very similar presentation, and I appreciate you all every year inviting me to talk to your, to your board. Let's talk about our mission. Um, years, years and years and years, certain individuals have asked me how much tobacco tobacco associates sell when they go overseas in a particular trip, or how much tobacco did you sell in a given year. And it's particularly one gentleman, I don't, I don't think he's here today, but I want everybody to, to, to clearly understand that we are an export promotion and marketing organization. That is our sole purpose, strictly from day one. We don't have an inventory, as, as Robert said. Um, all the money we collect from the farmers through the checkoff in North Carolina and South Carolina and through the Virginia Tobacco Board and the Georgia Commission goes strictly to export promotion or marketing. We don't have an inventory. We don't buy or sell tobacco or tobacco products. We don't collect third party contributions. We don't get grant money. Uh, Delta Airlines doesn't sponsor my flight when I go to Asia. So this, this just to clarify, this is, this is what we do and this is our purpose in this whole family industry of ours. How do we do that through these core promotion programs? If you've been to the meeting in the past, a lot of times I, I have explained these missions in great detail. I'm going to spare you today, but just know that we have these five promotion programs in, in yellow. They're proven, they're effective, they, they complement each other. Um, I think I had a slide one, one year and with all the arrows, if you remember, running all around. But um, the, the sole purpose of these programs is to promote and highlight the superior quality aspects of the tobacco you grow. And, and what do they accomplish? What are their objectives? This slide I know you've seen in the past, but if someone asks me what Tobacco Associates function is, what do they do? What do they accomplish? What are their objectives? Uh, this is it, to inform, educate, train, demonstrate, assist, service customers and potential customers, especially potential customers around the world. Let's talk a little bit about 2019 and our activities. Unfortunately, um, we had to cancel two trips in 2019 and we were working with the Tunisian Tobacco Monopoly to conduct an international lease standard seminar where we would have Bobby provide the instruction and we would fly in um, different officials from the region to participate in the seminar. Well, we never could get approval from the Tunisian government, so we had to cancel that, that, that particular program. But here's what we did do in 2019. We still had a productive year. We conducted four trade servicing missions. Of course, we did our annual meeting. Um, and we had a product development meeting, which I'll talk about later in the presentation. And we also conducted, uh, Bill Luffman, our chief technical consultant. Bill, can you stand up right here? Bill is one of the best in the world um, with his knowledge and his experience and this organization is blessed to have him as a consultant. Um, and Bill provided some sensory evaluation on some of the products or some of the Saigon Tobacco Company brands that we've assisted, that he's assisted them in developing and uh, utilizing U.S. lead. 2019, these are the companies we met with. Um, throughout my presentation, I'm going to go kind of talk a little bit about each one. In, in February, late February, early March, this is Philip Den. He is our Southeast Asia consultant. Uh, Phil and Bill do most of the work for us outside of the staff of TA. Uh, Phil traveled to, to Vietnam and met with the Saigon Tobacco Company chairman. He also met with, the, as he always does when he goes over there, the Vietnam National Tobacco Corporation officials, in addition to the Back Sun Tobacco Company. These two companies presently purchase U.S. tobacco. Back Sun purchases very little. Sometimes they, they, miss, they, they skip a year, but there's... We've been working with them a long time, and, and they have purchased, uh, you know, they're a smaller company, so they've purchased uh, some in the past, but, but are, 
Our Saigon Tobacco Company folks are, are purchasing a great deal, which I'll explain a little bit later in the presentation. Then Phil asked Phil to go meet with the Tobacco Authority of Thailand, which was the formerly the Thailand Tobacco Monopoly, which I keep saying I can't say the Thailand Authority of Thailand because I've been going there for 30 years, and the organization has been going there for over 50 years, I think, to Thailand. So Phil took the uh, particular brand called Saigon Silver to Vietnam, I mean to Thailand, and, and had them smoke it. He talked about our success and our progress that we've been having in Vietnam. Uh, they have very similar, Thailand and Vietnam have very similar market dynamics. Um, so that we were trying to get the Thais interested uh, in, in our accomplishments in Vietnam to see um, if we could potentially replicate something similar. Uh, they seem very interested, so we're going to keep we're going to keep on the ties here. They do not import any offshore leaf, as far as I know. Either some of the suppliers in the room might might tell me otherwise, but a couple years ago, uh, they stopped importing U.S. tobacco and they stopped importing other uh, overseas tobacco because people were trading down. Um, they were they were, as Yeet said, it was a, a case where they were buying uh, generic, low-cost cigarettes instead of the mid-price brands that had our tobacco in. So our tobacco essentially, you know, it, they, they stopped buying. So then Phil moved on to Indonesia. Uh, these two gentlemen, this gentleman works for SBS Corporation. Is, is, I didn't see Rusty come in. This is Boo Young, and he works for D Tobacco International, and they kind of work together. Um, Boo Young is the, the D Tobacco International who he represents. They're the kind of the, the sole importer for the Sumatra Tobacco Trading Company, which is, a lar which is the largest white producer of cigarettes in Indonesia. Um, they had, Booyang and D-Tobac had uh, expressed an interest in, in doing an international leaf standard seminar similar to the one we did with Star a couple years ago. So we're in the discussions right now with, with Boo Young and D-Tobac and, and Hendoko about doing a seminar and having Bobby go over there and do some training and have them bring in some of their, their customers and their potential customers for training. In March we had our annual meeting. George, I didn't see George come in, but uh, I kind of called it our in-house meeting. Beth, thank you so much again, as always, for stepping up and, uh, and being a part of the program. And we also had Bill and Robert um, Robert, thank you for all you do and, and all you've done for us, and, and of course, Bill. And then in March, uh, Tim Yarbrough uh, attended a child labor conference in Switzerland, and while they were there, they gave a presentation to the Eliminating Child Labor and Tobacco Foundation. Um, he went with three Tobacco Growers Association members. He represented us on that trip. Um, and they also met with Philip Morris International and, and Japan Tobacco International where they essentially thanked them for their purchases, talked about some of the grower concerns and, and grower issues that, that we have, and, uh, and of course, as always, asked them to buy more. So Tim, thank you so much for, for doing that for us. And then I had a trade servicing mission to China and the Philippines in June. While in Beijing, I met with the China Tobacco International folks. Obviously, uh, that was right after the trade war started, and, and you can imagine there wasn't a whole lot to talk about, but I, I guarantee you they appreciated me showing up and, uh, and still having an interest in what's going on. And they wanted to hear from me what was going on and, and give our side's uh, opinion. And of course, from their side, it was, you know, we want U.S. tobacco. Uh, we want to continue buying U.S. tobacco, but it's just a way to see it approach until we hear something from Beijing. So that was early on in this whole trade dispute. I did meet with Danny Ding. Danny's a great guy. Danny, great asset. Beth put me in touch with him. Um, you got a great guy over there. And uh, of course, I expressed to him, I, I talked to him about our capabilities, what we do, and throughout his travels throughout China, if there's any opportunities that we can assist or get involved in, in any way. Uh, he, he understands that. And finally, I flew down to Guangzhou, China, to meet with uh, the Tanhe Tobacco Company Limited. They're a, a leaf trader. They also are involved in uh, papers and filters, non-tobacco materials. 
um, in, in uh, China and around the world. I think they have five separate operations, or, uh, buying operations around the world, and we've got good relations with them. Dr. Collins, you would remember the ten, Dr. O, the Tan He. Um, they also have, a, they have someone here in Cary, I think. They don't contract anymore, but I still think they have their office in Cary. Um, then I flew on to the Philippines, where I, I met with the Associate, Ang, Associated Anglo-American Tobacco Company in Manila. Uh, this is Blake Dye, he's the Vice President. Uh, I was, it's a family-run business. I was told they bought out BAT in the 60s. So they're formerly the BAT of the Philippines. And they're, they're about 2% of the market share in the Philippines, which, which Bill, when we started with Mighty Corporation, if you remember, they were about 2%, and they made it up to about 28%, which was phenomenal. Um, but they, they, have, they utilize very good raw materials. They don't use, utilize crest, cut rolled, expanded stem, only cut rolled stem, and they use no byproducts in their, in their cigarettes. So I, I told Blake, if, if and when the opportunity arises, you know, we want to be the first to, to help you uh, utilize some U.S. fluke tobacco in your, in your high quality products. But um, there in the, the old U.S. Air Force Base, the Clark Air Force Base, um, they call it now the Clark Freeport Zone, which, they, which gives them uh, special duties and tax advantages. It's essentially free. Um, and they're a small operation. They do a lot. They do all export manufacturing. They do a lot of contract manufacturing for China. Not a lot, but some. Their largest market, believe it or not, is in is uh, the Ukraine and Russia. They they sell two particular brands. They ship two particular brands to China and Russia. While I was in the Philippines, um, I got to meet with some of the mighty corporation folks that were bought out by JTI. Essentially. Japan Tobacco kept all the, uh, the, the research, all the people we worked with in the blend department and the flavors, uh, primary. The only thing they really changed from my understanding from meeting with them was that they, uh, they got rid of all the sales and marketing folks and replaced them with, with some of their people. So in terms of the, the uh, integrity of the blends that we helped them develop in the Philippines, uh, we were told that they didn't, they didn't touch those. The only thing they did was, and, and was replace some of their filigrees. So we'll see. Um, then Philip Den again went to Vietnam to meet with various tobacco companies, Tan Hoa, Bac Sun, Da Nang. He also met with the corporation and again with the chairman of the Saigon Tobacco Company. That was in July. And then in November, Phil traveled back. Uh, usually, uh, Bill Luffman uh, makes one trip to Vietnam a year around this time, usually with, with Phil. This particular time, we tried to do, change things a little bit with the hurricane and, and given our, our budget situation. Um, I asked Phil to go over there and actually bring back samples for, for Mr. Luffman here to evaluate in our lab here in Elkin. So, there, there's, there's no substitute for FaceTime, I think you all know that, but, but uh, as you can see, Bill put together a very detailed report with some suggestions for some, uh, his, his suggestions based on his evaluations. Uh, so that worked out, that worked out well. Going to spend a little more time in Vietnam, talk about our product development. We have seven brands now that contain U.S. Tobacco, anywhere from Bill, I would say 15 to 23 yeah. percent. And the Venetaba Corporation uh, has three particular products containing U.S. flu gear tobacco. And this, and this is the new product we launched in September of this year. Um, Saigon Star, this is supposed to be an ultra premium product. It's high priced, it's for a very niche market. Uh, I do not have any sales data, but I do have some updated sales data from some of the other products you just saw. In terms of updates, Saigon has, has remained in the number one position for the last couple years as the number one manufacturer in Vietnam. Um, as I mentioned, they, they launched the Saigon Star brand, which is relatively new. I think that's more just to show that they have a brand in, in, in all categories. They, they can produce a brand that's in a, it's in the super premium category, and it gives, gives them uh, 
more credibility, I guess, or more, I don't know what the word is, but the main things, the main thing that happened in Vietnam recent, uh, somewhat recently is that the second quarter of last year, they raised taxes and that plummeted a lot, a lot of, uh, of volume in terms of, of um, the sales decreases. Uh, some, some brands, some companies experienced it harder than others. Some brands were down 20% overall. We were fortunate that uh, the total Saigon brand sales were down about 12% at 37 million packs um, from a year ago or a year prior. The, the other thing that's real notable about our, our, our work in Vietnam is that BAT has caught wind of us and the Saigon Silver brand, which out of the 37 sells 20 million packs, uh, they've launched two aggressive marketing campaigns in, in, in this past year. One of them worked, one of them didn't. But between the, 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 the BAT uh, competition and the, the, the tax increase, um, we're fortunate that that particular brand's only down 9%. So, so we're still doing well. Uh, the brands are very, very well accepted and we're pleased with, uh, with, with little less impact than a lot of brands had on the market. All right, let's change gears. Our target market still, since I started 30 years ago with TA, this, this has been a major focus for TA. We've put a lot of resources there, put a lot of effort there. I've probably been over there 80 times. Um, so we're still focusing on this particular market, and I'll show you why in a minute. Middle East and North Africa, of course, you know that's a very unstable region. Our big customers, which, which I have another slide for, but essentially, uh, <coughs> the Egyptians and the Lebanese buy U.S. tobacco. I mean, and we're all also keeping an eye on Tunisia and Algeria. If we look at, the, uh, this is from Euromonitor, the global cigarette market by region. As I mentioned, the two regions, well, you can see why in 2005, Asia Pacific, uh, in terms of global cigarettes, uh, were 55%. Now they're, 2018, they're 64%, so that's growing. And the only other region in the world that's growing is this Middle East Africa region. And those are where we're focused. This is the most going to be a slide similar to what Yeet showed you. Um, if you look, probably the most de depressing but, you know, realistic slide we have. And, uh, you know, Yeet pointed to this other 18%. You've got your top big five transnational tobacco companies. Um, with the exception of China, or China National Tobacco Corporation, everybody's really fighting over this little piece of the pie right here, and we're, we're uh, you know, and, and we're doing the same thing. Now, th that's just the reality. If you look at, in 2001, 43% um, of global market sales were controlled by five leading TTCs. By 2017, it's, it, it became 86% of the market. That's, that's just incredible. Um, over a 20-year period, so, so that's, that's reality. That'll slap you in the face right there, but we're doing our best to aggressively promote, oh, sorry y'all, to aggressively promote in that, those two regions. And looking at the, the, the Asia Pacific region, let's look at the ASEAN countries. Um, they're the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. This, this to me is incredible if you look at if you look at Indonesia, now I have, unofficially I have different numbers. Actually, I see the, the line graphs going this way uh, based on what I could, the research I could find. But look how enormous, we're talking about billions of sticks here. Look at, we're, you know, we're at 340 billion sticks. Keep that number in mind. That shows you how incredibly big the Indonesian market is as compared to even the Philippines, Thailand, or Vietnam. Now, if you look at the other ASEAN countries, you know, and, and even the chart on the left starts at 15 billion sticks. So you can see that Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, and Singapore, you how, just, just how small they are compared to um, these, the big four. And, and I'll tell you, we, the big four, these four countries right here in the last 10 years, and probably going back to when I started and even before that, this is where our focus has always been, at these four countries right here. Unfortunately, JTI bought Mighty Corporation in the Philippines, and uh, that essentially in 2007, 
17, and essentially that ended our relationship um, with Mighty Corporation. But I just wanted to show this, and I'm going to highlight it even further with this pie chart, and mention once again, this is where, this is where we're, we're looking to uh, continue our, our promotion efforts. So Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, and, and uh, well, I got that, I mixed that up, but, but that, that's a good visual right there. It just shows you where the larger, the larger markets are. Um, a quick shot, I, I showed this last year. This is the, the Middle East, North Africa region, and as I mentioned, Egypt and Lebanon purchase. That, the reason why I said we need to keep an eye on Algeria and Tunisia is we, we, uh, they used to purchase back in the early 90s, I think it was, and, and uh, you know, we want to bring them back on board if we can, and it's, it's just unfortunate we couldn't work that Tunisia seminar out. So let's move on to 2020. Let's look forward at our promotion agenda. Uh, we plan to, do, to, do, to attend two trade fairs. We plan to have Bill go do some on-site development, training, and, and evaluations, assistance, um, our usual trade servicing activities. This year, our big project is, is, is going to be a international lease standard seminars with, with Bobby as instruction to, to Indonesia. We're hoping to do two in one trip. And also, we've, we've, there's been some some discussion or, or some requests for Bill to come over to Indonesia to do a, a product development, a, a two or three day product development seminar. So we're going to try to find out where we can work that in. So looking at the countries we hope to visit in 2020, Algeria, Egypt, Indonesia, Philippines, Tunisia, Bulgaria, Germany, Lebanon, Thailand, Vietnam. That's where we hope to go if this coronavirus settles down and we can get back on the, in the airways. Um, First fair is in May, Sofia, Bulgaria. They had a fair there two years ago, and really it was a small regional fair, but it had a lot of good contacts. Uh, I made a lot of good contacts at that particular fair. And while there, there's two cigarette manufacturers in Bulgaria that do a lot of exporting. I plan to go visit, in addition to a, 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 leaf, uh, a leaf, leaf supplier, and I'll hopefully get a chance to visit. Then there's the big show that happens every year in Dortmund, Germany. Dortmund is, this show is huge. Uh, Bill, I don't know, it's 12. It, it, they fill up like seven or eight conference halls or exhibition halls. It's just, it's just a huge show. Everybody in, in the industry, uh, even the hemp people started showing up in great numbers last year. Daniel, you know that. Um, but vaping, e-cigarettes, everything, uh, all accessories, pipes, cigars, you name it. Uh, this is the big show of the year. So we hope to attend that this year. We didn't attend it last year. And as I mentioned, in June or November, possibly do two internationally standard seminars back to back in Indonesia. We've got a lot of interest. We've got three or four companies out there wanting us to, to, to go over Bobby. Um, and we're hoping that we can work something with D2Back so we can get, you know, instead of, instead of having a, a seminar for one particular company, we can do a seminar where we can bring in multiple companies and so we have a much, much broader audience. And again, Bill, hopefully uh, we'll make a trip over there and, and analyze some of their products and let you give the, your evaluations, your impressions, your advice, your counsel, your, you, you know, your expertise to keep training these folks. I know you've, you've done it for the last four or five years and we, we appreciate that and I think they, they understand your way uh, and your methods more so than the old Chinese way which they, they used to do. They're coming around, yeah. So they're coming around. Um, and of course, I mentioned maybe in Indonesia we can tie in a, a little mini seminar where we can bring in other companies and, uh, and have you give your expertise there. Uh, kind of winding down a little bit, our website, as you know, hopefully you all have been to our website. It's got a lot of good information about our programs and activities. Please visit it if you, if you haven't. If you have friends that ask questions about Tobacco Associates, please direct them to me or, or the website or Veronica. So thank you for your continued support. It's your organization. We're just, we're just, Veronica and I are just happy to be on staff. Um, and we've, we've done this for quite a while. And I want to thank you, Veronica, for all your hard work over the years. Appreciate that.